Hello and welcome to a Charlotte and Guest knitting tutorial. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to work short rows in two color brioche. It's a technique that's not widely used, but I use it in one of my design. Um, as you can see in this shawl, there are uh, wedges of a contrasting color and actually this is two color brioche, so on the wrong side. I use this mauve color and on the right side I have this variegated um, speckled yarn in a lighter color. So the way this has worked is from the left to the right and it's knit on the bias but this is the direction uh, in which the, the rows were knit and the first row of this wedge is very long and it goes across the entire shawl and as I move my as I make my way up this wedge the rows get shorter this shawl is symmetrical so on the other side I am still knitting from left to right and this time the first row is short and then as I make my way across the wedge, they get longer. So that this last row here goes across the entire shawl. I've prepared a swatch of one color brioche. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna cut my tail. It's a bit too long. So, this is one color brioche. So remember in brioche, uh, a stitch plus a yarn over, as you have here in between my thumbs, is considered to be one stitch. And you will find this every other stitch. I'm just going to knit a couple of rows in one color brioche that we can review together the different techniques and that you can so that you can get used to my knitting. I work a simple twisted slip stitch on the edge, which means that I slip the first stitch of each row knitwise and I purl the last stitch. So slip the first stitch knitwise knitwise. And then gonna slip one yarn over, so I bring the yarn to the yarn to the front, slip one, and I've created a yarn over because I'm then going to bark, which means that I'm going to knit the next stitch with the yarn over. And you see that I've created here a yarn over on the previous stitch. Slip one yarn over, bark one. And I'm con going to continue in fashion until the end of the row. Slip one yarn over, bark one. For the last stitches, I'm going to slip one yarn over and this time I'm going to bring the yarn to the front because I'm going to purl the last stitch. Okay. Now on the wrong side, I'm going to slip the first stitch, slip the first stitch knitwise and then I'm going to bark one bring the yarn to the front, slip one yarn over, bark one, yarn in front, slip one yarn over, bark one, until the end of the row.
I bring the yard the yarn to the front for the last stitch because I'm gonna purl it. So I've worked one, two, three, four, five rows times two. That's ten. Because to create one stitch you need to work the row twice. So if I have five stitches it means I've worked ten rows. And now it's time to introduce my contrasting color and it's marled so it will play the role of the variegated yarn that I showed you on my design and I'm gonna work the first row what we're gonna do is for the first row of the wedge we're gonna work across the entire row and we're going to do the same at the end of the wedge so that the short rows are encased in two complete rows at the beginning and at the end so as I start I'm not going to just slip the stitch I'm going to actually knit it to attach my yarn I'm going to bring the yarn to the front and I'm going to slip one yarn over, bark one, until the end of the row. And I purl the last stitch. Now instead of turning my work, I'm gonna slip, slide all my work to the other side of my circular needle and get ready to work a second pass of the first row and I'm gonna use the green, which is my background color. I'm gonna slip the first stitch Curl wise. I'm going to bring the green yarn to the front and I'm going to bark one, slip one yarn over, burp one until the end of the row. So I slip one, burp one. And I'm going to slip the last stitch purlwise. I'm going to turn my work, turn my work, and I'm going to pick up the contrasting color again. So this is my light gray. I'm going to slip the first stitch knitwise, and then I'm going to bring the yarn in front. Slip one yarn over, burp one. Slip one yarn over, burp one. And I'm going to work in fashion until the end of the row. And I'm going to purl the last stitch. Now instead of turning my work, I'm going to slide it to the other end 
of my circular needle. And I'm going to work the second pass of the second row using this green yarn. And so I'm going to start by slipping the first stitch purlwise. And then bark one, slip one yarn over, bark one, slip one yarn over, bark one, slip one yarn over until the end of the row. I'm going to keep my yarn in the back and slip the last stitch purlwise. Okay, I've turned my work and as you can see we've worked two rows and each row had two passes because we're working with two colors. So in total we've made four passes and we've created two stitches. So you can see here one is fully formed and the other one is still resting on the cable there. And now we're ready to start doing our short rows. The short row technique that I'm going to demonstrate is based on the wrap and turn short row technique. And if we were working regular wrap and turn, this column here is where we would, this would end up um, as the wrapped stitch, this one here. So it is the fifth from the left. Okay, count with me. One, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth stitch from the left. So what we're gonna do is with our contrasting color, we're gonna work the first pass of the first row. So, oops slip the first stitch knitwise, slip one yarn over, bark one, and we're going to work this until we reach the fifth stitch from the end of the row. So the instruction would, would be until two five stitches before the end of the row. All right, and so this here is a slip one yarn over. So I'm gonna slip one yarn over. Okay. So we have five stitches left and we're gonna bring the yarn to the front. So I've completed my yarn over. I'm gonna slip the next stitch and it has a yarn over so I'm gonna slip both strands of yarn, both loops. I'm gonna bring the yarn to the back so I've wrapped the stitch and I'm not gonna complete the wrap. Instead I'm gonna slip the remaining stitches of the needle so that I reach the end of the row and I can slide my work to the other side. So we've worked all the way to the sixth stitch from the end. We've half wrapped the fifth and then we've slipped the last four stitches. And then we've slid all the stitches to the other end of the needle. So, for the second pass, we're gonna start by slipping the first stitch purlwise, and then with the green collar, burp one, slip one yarn over, burp one, slip one yarn over, oops, I split 
the stitch, slip one yarn over, burp one, slip one yarn over, burp one, until we reach the sixth stitch from the left, which is the stitch right at the right of the one we've just wrapped. Burp one, slip one yarn over, burp one. Here it is. And as you can see, I have my half formed wrap right here. We're now going to turn the work. Okay. I have my light gray yarn towards me and the green yarn in the back. Okay. And we're going to work on the first pass of the second wrong side row. And we're going to start with a slip worn yarn over. The yarn is in front, so I'm just going to slip the stitch, yarn over, burp one, slip one, yarn over, burp one, until the end of the row, as we would do any other row. Okay, so what we would do if we were not working short rows is slide the work to the other end of the needle and we're going to do that and usually we would have the green yarn hanging right here and ready to be worked. Because we've worked a short row, the yarn is actually five stitches from the end of the needle of the row. So we're going to make our way to the yarn by slipping the stitches. So I'm going to slip one, two, three, four, and now I've reached my wrapped stitch. As you can see in the front, the yarn here wraps it. In the back, it wraps it, but it's also pulled towards the top of the needle to form the yarn over for the next stitch. What we're going to do is we just want the two loops of the stitch that is wrapped. So we're going to pick them up and we're not going to take this yarn over. Okay, and we're going to slip the stitch to the right needle. Okay, we now have five stitches on the right needle. The fifth is wrapped and we're going to work the rest of the row. Started starting with a bark one. and slip the last stitch. I've turned to work. So I've turned to work to show you what we've done. As you can see, for the last five stitches, we only have two stitches of the contrast color. For the rest of the row, we have four. This fifth stitch from the left here is wrapped on the front and on the back and on the back too. We're going to do this two more times, wrapping this stitch here and this stitch here and then I will show you how to pick up the wraps. So we want to wrap this stitch here so we're gonna work until this which will be a slip one yarn over and then we will wrap the stitch. So working with my contrast collar I'm gonna slip the first stitch knitwise, bring the yarn to the front, slip one yarn over Bark one, slip one yarn over, 
bark one, slip one yarn over, bark one. So I said I wanted to leave two knit columns and wrapped and wrap this third one from the last from the previous wrap. Okay, so I have one more bark to do and then slip one yarn over, bring the yarn to the front, slip the next stitch, bring the yarn to the back, and now I'm going to slip the remaining stitches. Okay, I'm going to slide the work to the right and we're going to work with the green yarn. Slip the first stitch purlwise and burp one. Slip one yarn over, burp one. Until I reach the wrapped stitch. Okay, I'm gonna just burp one. I've reached my wrap and now I'm gonna turn the work and work my way, my way back. With the contrast color, I'm gonna start working with a slip one yarn over. I'm gonna slide the work and I'm gonna slip the stitches as I make my way to the yarn. When I get to the wrap stitch, I want to make sure to slip the wrap stitch without picking up the wrap. So I'm just going to pick up those two strands. My wrap is here, I hold it down with my thumb. And now I've reached the green yarn. And I can start working, starting with a bark one. and I just slip the last stitch. On the right side of the work, you can see that the top is not straight anymore. We've worked an angle. For the last wrap, we're gonna wrap this stitch, which is the fifth stitch from the beginning of the work on the right side. And this will show you what to do when you've reached the right half of your work. You'll see that it doesn't make sense anymore to slip the rest of the row. You're going to want to slip backwards. So let's start with our contrast color. And I'm going to slip the first stitch knitwise, bring the yarn to the front, slip one yarn over, bark one, slip one yarn over, and I've reached a stitch that I want to wrap, so I'm going to complete more yarn over, bring the yarn to the front, slip the next stitch, bring the yarn to the back, and before I told you to slip the rest of the stitches until the end of the row, but as you can see, that's a lot of stitches. 16 to be exact, when I only have five on the right side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip the stitches back onto the, ne the left needle. If you prefer to slip stitches from the left needle to the right, 
you could turn your work to do that or you could still choose to slip the large part of the stitches. So I'm back at the beginning of the row and I'm gonna start working with the green yarn. So I slip the first stitch purlwise, prepare for a burp, slip one yarn over, burp, and I'm at the wrap again. So I'm gonna turn my work And with the contrast color, I'm going to start working with a slip horn yarn over. Again, usually I would tell you to slide the work to the right and then work your way to the green yarn. In this case, the green yarn is very close to where I'm at, so I'm going to Stay this way, do not slide the work, but just slip the stitches from the right needle to the left until I reach this mess of a wrap. Okay, when you get to this point from the left side of the work, you can just pick these two loops Okay, these two loops, and you'll see that if you just peek these two, you actually end up at the correct point. So I'm just gonna pull a little on this green yarn here and start working with a bark. Okay, so we've done three wraps right here, here, and there. And as you can see, the top of the work is angled. What we want to do is we want to close this wedge by working all of the way across the work and pick up the wraps. So in order to pick up the three wraps, what we're going to do is we're going to work two rows across the entire length of the swatch and we're gonna pick up the rows in the first pass of the first row and the next three passes are gonna be worked as normal. Starting with my contrast color, I'm going to slip one knitwise, bring the yarn to the front, slip one yarn over, bark one, slip one yarn over, and now I get to the wrap. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under the wrap to pick it up, and then through the two loops of the stitch. So the stitch plus it's yarn over and I'm going to pull, I'm going to bark and pull my knit stitch through all three loops. And I've barked and picked up the wrap. Okay, let's find the next wrap. Okay. So the yarn is in front and because I'm basically going to do a bark or knit stitch um, I don't need to worry too much about this. The yarn over is, is going to complete itself. So I'm going to go under the wrap, pick it up, and then go through both loops of the stitch, wrap the yarn around the needle and pull it through all three loops. Okay, and the final one. Again, under the wrap, through both loops, wrap the yarn, pull through all three loops. Another way to go around this is to slip the stitch to the right needle, 
pick up the wrap, put it on top of the needle, and then pull, uh, slip the three loops back to the left needle and bark them together as one. The thing with this technique, it's much clearer, um, but it, it tends to pull on the stitches a lot, and so you won't get uh, such a nice even result. But if you struggle with the technique that I started by starting started with, um, you can always use this method. All right, I've gotten to the end of the row, and I'm just now gonna work starting from the other side, the second pass of this first row. And this is just now normal two-color brioche. I don't have to worry about the wraps anymore. They're all taken care of. I've turned my work and I'm now going to work both passes of the second row. So we have now completed a wedge of short rows in two color brioche. As you can see on the right side, it doesn't really show at all. Whereas on the wrong side, you can see the wraps as they are attached here and then there. Keep in mind that once you've done a section of short rows, it will angle your work. So from now on, your rows are going to be perpendicular to the cord here, and so your work is going to angle towards the left. If you want your work to angle towards the right, you have to make the wedge taller on the left side than it is on the right side. So really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't hesitate if you have any other questions you want me to answer or special techniques that you would like me to demonstrate.